everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and welcome to day one of 12 Days Live, where every day we're going to meet up and celebrate winter and the holiday season and coming together and all those things that we think of this time of year by painting live streaming every single day. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. And we're going to be showing you how to do this winter window scene. Which I'm sort of, I know we named it Winter Window. So like, <laughs> I think it's, just, but it, it's what it is. It was Red Winter Window. It's a Red Winter Window. Because so. we might do another color someday. It could be the Blue Winter Window. <laughs> or a yellow one. <laughs> we might do a Wood Winter Winter Window. We, we could get really crazy there. <laughs> so I'm going to be explaining every part of the process of this painting step by step during this live streaming event. You guys can ask questions, art questions, all kinds of things, you know, to help you paint along at home. So you can paint along with me or later on the replay. Oh. If you check the description below and open up the more button, you'll find a link to the traceable and the materials. Also, you'll find all of the materials that I'm using in this project. So I'm pretty excited about that. They're a pretty simple palette and everything today, and I think we're ready to get started. And, I, and I'm going to say hi to all of our people who are quote unquote painting along with us at work. So, you know, because, you know, we're at work and yeah. So yes, we know how it is. <laughs> it's work. Got to got to got to be there. But, you know, totally. We, we can also pay attention to, you know, some maybe some other stuff. Maybe we won't. We won't tell. I won't. I won't tell. They're here at work. They're not supposed to be watching. <laughs> you go ahead. It's hard. Okay. <laughs> so I've got a 9 by 12 canvas. And I have some wishes on that canvas. Today's wishes are healing for Sandra. Brittany needs healing wishes for her friend's husband. Megan wishes her grandma healing after fall. Then this one is healing support and compassion this holiday season for those dealing with depression. Kidney for Kevin and patience needs relief from anxiety. So those are my mm -hmm. wishes. You light keepers out there are welcome to add these wishes to your canvases. If you have a wish, remember it can be silly, it can be serious, it doesn't really matter. It's just about putting that good positivity into your art experience. Let's look at our paint that we've got out. All right. So I'm going to take just my big brush because I want to make short work of this. And I've got phthalo blue out. And this brush is about, oh, it's about an inch and a half wide, isn't it? Yeah. But anything that's your nice big wide brush, synthetic bristles, this is my number 30. But you're just looking for a brush that will let you cover the whole canvas pretty easily. So I dip the brush in water, rag off the extra, because I don't want tons and tons of water. I don't want to make a lake. Mm -hmm. And I pull away from my paint, flip my brush, pull away from my paint, flip my brush, pull away from my paint. This is how I'm loading it. You guys ask me a lot how I get so much paint in my brush. This flipping and pulling actually pulls a lot of paint into your brush. And you might not know that. So I'm just letting you guys know how you, how you get that brush loaded. Because it can seem sometimes you get all this paint and then you go to your canvas and then nothing happens to it at all. I'm painting the whole canvas this color blue. I'm going to dip and drag off the excess water and I'm going to pull again and flip and pull, flip and pull and just paint this whole canvas blue. Now, every once in a while, I'll, to just cover it, I'll change brush strokes. You'll see me just randomly being brushy all over the place and then I'll come back and forth horizontally and smooth that out while it's still wet. Mm hmm I'm going to flip my canvas because I have a lip on my easel and it's not fun to paint around. I'm going to dip in, drag off extra, and get the rest of this background color on here. And you can see I've managed to load all that paint into my brush. I have to say that paint looks a lot darker when you first start. And then as it sort of thins out, it gets this sort of luminous blue quality to it. Well, and it, th Thalo is lovely for winter because it does that. It's one of my favorite winter blues. I've got a couple that I really like. And the trick with this, though, especially if you're using maybe basics paints, you know, economy paints, mm -hmm. is that by doing this sort of base blue background, as we layer up, the transparency will work for us as a benefit. Yeah. And make sure that's all covered up. So now my canvas is entirely painted. Yep. So it's ready for anything. I can smooth out, even though I'm going to be painting all over the top of it. I just want to make sure I have a smooth surface with nothing bumpy or textural to mess with me. I'm going to rinse out this brush. 
I press it against the bottom of the glass and swish back and forth. I'm just trying to get most of the pigment out of it. And I'm going to take my towel and wipe off my brush. And I'm going to push my other brushes here over the side because <laughs> they're pumping into me. Mm -hmm. Now, for the next layer, I'm definitely going to want this layer to be dry. And I can speed that up by hair drying it. I'm going to put it on the cool setting. I'm going to turn it up to high. I'm going to hold it back. I don't want to overheat the um, plastic in the paint because it's very, very, this paint is very temperature sensitive. So you don't want to be like really cooking your paint. Well, so while you're going to do that, I'm going to say, gonna do that. Hi, yeah, I'm gonna say hi a bunch of our community. Say. So, hey guys, oh my gosh, it's so nice to see everybody today. We've got lots of new faces in the crowd. I see, I say, I see Isra, I hope I say that right. And I saw Gail and Julie and, and Jilly G, oh gosh, I'm going to try this one too. Uh, Gilga, I think Gilga, Jilga. Man, I hope I'm saying that right. Nikita and Tess and oh my gosh, uh, Sanja and, and Sanjay and Deb and Shelly, all all, you, all of the new people who who are here. I you know it's so hard to get all of the shout outs in that we get, but I want to say hello to everybody. Really love having you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and joining us. Um, we love the live chats, so I love when you guys come and hang out with us. Um, really appreciate it. So. Uh, don't forget to show your pictures and stuff as well. We got to see this. I'll let Cinnamon get back to it. Woohoo! I got my chalk out. And so what I meant by the paint is temperature, ins temperature sensitive is that um, the surface, like if it gets hot, like if you have paint, you know, you're painting out somewhere where it's hot, then the surface of it is just a little softer than when it's cold. That's what I mean. <laughs> just realized that could have sounded super random and weird. What's that? Oh, <laughs> the paint is super colored. Oh. Nothing happens to it that's crazy. It's not color change paint. <laughs> So I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to come up about four fingers on this side and maybe just a little higher or lower, making another mark on the left-hand side. And I'm going to make a little hill mark. It says, oh, I've got a hill. And then you know what I can have? I can have another little hill that bends into it like this. And that's going to be my landscape. I'm going to start putting in my sky, but now I know about where my hills are. I know I don't have to take it down too far to the bottom. And I'm going to put out some more of my colors. Yes. Which colors are you putting? I'm going to put out some phthalo blue again. I got more of that today. Got more of that. I bought, I, we were low. As you can see, see, look, there's the new phthalo green I got today. Oh, yeah, I'm so excited about that. I got brand new phthalo. New, new tube of paint. It's, you have, you have, you have, we got a couple new tubes of paint. We, we used our, our shopping sales, and I ran out this morning and got some paint. <laughs> it's always good. <laughs> To do that, I'm going to get some titanium white and put that out. Which was sold out. Was it? Yes, not surprisingly. Oh, because you use twice as much white as any other color. It's like crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to put out my red yet because that's the last thing that I put in. I can put out a little yellow because that'll be in my snowy field. Oh, it was like squeezing out. What's going on there? Oh, I... uh. Don't crimp it. I didn't, I didn't. I thought I didn't think I overcrimped them. I just sort of caught them up so you could get some out because <laughs> they were all super deflated. They're all pushed out. I'm putting out a little of my heavy body black. See what's see now. What I've learned is that uh, not to overcrimp them. And what we're talking about is I've got this little gizmo. That's like a. It's like a toothpaste squeezer, mm -hmm. and, it, and, it, and it squeezes up all the paint from the bottom of the tube. So this is a number eight cat's tongue. And what this does is it comes to a point. But listen, for this, you could use a nice round. Let me show what it's out. Any of these rounds would work. Mm -hmm. So you just want something that has a nice round stroke with a pointy tip. Any of that will work. I'm going to pull out a little of my blue. And I'm going to get a little white in that. And I'm doing it loosely mixed. So you can see I pull it out and flip. And come over here, pull it out and flip. But I'm not mixing them together. Mm. So you can kind of see that load. And then the first swirl I'm going to plan in is this one here where it goes across my sky. So I'm going to come right here. If you divide the canvas into fours in your mind, it's in the middle of the upper left square. I'm going to make a swirl. And I swirl around. You can see me go around. And then I'm going to come over. And I'm going to swirl like that. That's all I got to do. I'm going to get a little more of my just blue paint, and you can smidge some white into it. So it has some 
some nice streaking. Can you see the streaking? Mm -hmm. And so that's about just not mixing it in and letting it streak around the canvas. And I'm just going to keep pressing this out. And you can see where the blue gets over itself. It gets quite dark. That's actually really helpful to us in a minute. <laughs> but I want to get some, some paint in. I'm going to drag off my extra. And I'm going to come here real quick. And I'm going to make sure that I get the darker part of my sky in with my pure blue. You can even come in your swirl and kind of add this like little shadow of the blue. Chrissy is super excited to paint this one today because she has her cat's tongue. She got her number Does eight. Does she have her cat's tongue? She got, she got her number eight's cat's tongue and she is like super excited to give it a test drive. It is a good time to do that. So I'm just letting this <laughs> color kind of layer up and darken. Bonnie says her brush gives her authority and his authority. emphasis <laughs> on the authority. <laughs> <laughs> I understand how that is. I'm brushing around this swirl with my dark color. Just come around the swirl. I can go into that one. So see how the, like, the stroke, you can just keep following your stroke. And it gives your sky a bunch of that energy. Now there's another little swirl that you can add down here. I'm going to just get a little bit of wind and add a little bit right there coming down. Just a little bit. It kind of swirled off its first swirl. And it's okay if you're crossing over your hill, grabbing just blue. You're just wanting to make smooth strokes that have sort of windy blowing around. Pencing off. Now I'm going to kind of lay in some of the top up here. You can even come up with your blue. We'll be going through a lot of blue. Yeah. Yeah. Bring that around. And I know I'm going to have a swirl here, so I can even start stroking that in before I add the extra yeah the extra all right so it's just simple colors in this simple strokes i'm just swirling around now it can be stressful the swirls <laughs> that might be a surprise to you if it is and that's just because you probably have a perfect little curly cue in your mind and it can take a few practices with the brush, whatever brush you're using to get there. But you can see I have those brush strokes in. And what that's going to let me do is I'm going to get some more of my white. Just sort of loaded on here. And I'm going to come off the canvas and paint in this beautiful swirl. It's going to be where my moon's going to go. I want to lower it. And you can do that. You just... Move your swirl. I'm going to get another little swirl. There's a kind of a cool curly one that kind of comes like snakes. There we go. He's sort of an odd fellow and I like him. Now I'm going to get more white on my brush. And you can see I'm just pulling it out and flipping and pulling it out. I'm going to come back here and just very carefully, streakily, see how I'm doing very light pressure? And I'm just dragging the brush over, letting the white streak, creating that nice little wind effect. Letting it blend a little bit into the paint so you can see that that makes it a little bit blue. And stuff. Pull out a little more white. Do the same down here in this little swirl. So I'm just at the tip of my brush and I just let it drag softly around. And you can just see it's just very softly touching the canvas. Oh. 
you're a knock. All right. I'm going to come right here. And just swirl this around. There we go. So this is just about being very gentle and soft and letting the little paint streaks create the little wind effects. This is a real whimsical little sky that you can do anytime and you can do it with a lot of different color combos. So much like much, I just dipped a little bit in my water and drug off the extra because I don't want it to be wet. I still want to be softly dry brushing. Now this I might be a little wider on the outside for my, because uh, I'm going to be putting my moon in there. And I need to leave a little room for my framing. My other objects, so just softly. And every time you swirl, it'll be a little bit different. But it's just really fun to do. Now, if your paint coverage is super, super light and you need it to deepen up, you can take a smidge, and I would be very careful with this, of your black into your thalo blue. And you can deepen up some of the sky. But this is something to be careful with because it can overdo real fast. You have too much black on your brush. You want to just darken the phthalo a bit. You know, so I'm just brushing this over to make sure I've got some depth happening here. If I needed it. If you've got good sky and good swirls, don't worry about it. But we're all painting with different stuff and that can impact us. All right. Just painting that carefully here. Just about the blue paint that you have and how deep the coverage ends up being. Oh, I like that. I'm happy there. So I'm going to get yeah. my dotting tool that I took out so I would have it. Okay, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so to dot, I really like a fluid paint. It's like my favorite. Um, this is golden fluid and has a lot of pigment in the paint, so it's super effective. But, you know, just you, so you know, there's lots of different soft body paints out there, including craft paints. So, if, you know, you're on a budget, that's a way that you could get this result and not be stressed out by it. I'm going to use my dotting tool. This has a little metal and a little ball at the end. It's going to let me make perfect little dots. If you don't have one of these, the back of your brush... We'll do it. Okay. Now, the dotting tool is cool because it has that little ball, so it makes the perfect little dot. Yeah, it's it's super cool. But you can you can totally get the effect. You just have to be more careful with, like, the back of a brush or something. I'm going to wait to dot here because I won't put my moon in. <laughs> okay. I'm just we're watching you dot. So I'm going to dot my swirls a little bit along my swirls. Not everything on my swirls, and I tend to like to go to the outer edge of my swirl. To get this effect and I like to tap my tool whatever tool that is several times so I get different size stars see how it gives me different size dots each time oh yeah so I think that's important and this is something if you haven't enjoyed splattering which I love splattering so I can't imagine that but you know we're all different people this is the more controlled version huh this is a much more controlled artful version So just dotting, enjoying my dotting, maybe dot to the outside here. Don't be too stressed where you know you've got your tree, <laughs> right? This would not be the place to do the best dots of your life because you know you've got an object going through here. <laughs> 
But it's, you know, you can, it's still okay to practice your dots, yeah. It's okay to practice your dots. But I know sometimes there's a morning period where you're like, that's where I put the best dots of my life. Well, I guess I hadn't thought about that. But I think this is a fun, fun thing to do. Just dotting along. And I know I have a lot of dot painters that follow me. <laughs> so they're probably like, ah, oh, some dotting, finally. <laughs> now, sometimes when I'm tapping, the dots get too light. And I just go back over where I don't like them. You'll Lots notice every once in a while I wipe off my ball bearing on the end of this. Yeah. And, and whatever tool you're using to dot, it's good to clean it off because the acrylic paint will dry onto it and then make weird shapes. Oh, yeah. Just having fun. Putting these swirly stars as if the stars are caught up in my wind. Isn't that cool? It could be snowflakes yeah. blowing. And, you know, it just means different stuff symbolically, I think, to each of us. And there isn't really a wrong way to interpret that. Now, I'm going to take my chalk real quick. And this is just something I'm going to do because my moon will impact where I'll want my dots. So I'm going to just put my moon shape in where I think I'm going to have it. So I'm aware of it as I'm dotting. If I didn't put that in there, I could be dotting and not really thinking about where my moon is and then be frustrated because my dots weren't where I wanted them to be. Just dotting along. Isn't that fun and I like pretty? That. Super fun and pretty. Just plopping little dots. Um, this is absolutely best laying flat. <laughs> <laughs> but I painted an easel for the show. You're fast with your paint on the dot. You just go, Boop. I am, man. I got, well, I got, I just like, I go through my dots quickly. Well, you just, it's uh, trying to make sure that people, you know, the like, but sometimes I'm just too slow to get your <laughs> dip. <laughs> I gotta like be super on Switch ready. <laughs> Super ready to see those little stars going. So it's a good time to evaluate. Make sure you're happy with all your stars, wherever they're located, every place that you have them. And now we can start putting in our hills, which I think is super fun. And our hill is more of a turquoise color. And I have a little trick to get that. You can mix this with your brush. But if you have a palette knife, and it can be plastic, it can be metal, you can make a one-to-one -one mixture of your thalo green and your thalo blue. And then you have thalo blue green? And then you have thalo turquoise. You can also just buy a tube of thalo turquoise because <laughs> they make it. <laughs> and they do a good job, so I'm not saying don't buy it. <laughs> Put out just a little thalo blue because I know I'll need a little bit still. You know, I was in the paint store and I was looking at all of the different paints in there. There's lots of different crazy colors. There are lots of different crazy colors. So I have this little hill here and I have a little forward hill. I'm going to make my little hill here and I'm going to make the one back here just maybe, maybe a little darker, a little less bright than the one in front. So I'm going to take my turquoise to my white. And you can see I'm going brush, 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 brush. I'm going to flip now because I'm loading. No, I missed a question here earlier. Okay. I, I'm sure that you, could, you, could, you could answer this. So it, now, uh, Steve was asking, does it matter if the background is dry before we start doing the swirls? Is that even relevant? Um, it's nice, actually, on the swirls for me if it's not completely dry because then my brush picks up a little of the background paint and it makes a lot of different colors in the swirls. Yeah. So... Okay. It really is about, is the dampness of the background interfering with your productivity? Gotcha. So if when you're painting, your paint isn't sticking right, it's not flowing over right, because all, you know, even though it's all acrylic paint, different brands of acrylic paint can behave differently. Yeah. 
It's not, I mean, they can all interact, but it's not necessarily one-to-one of behavior. You'll notice I'm just kind of taking the stroke and kind of curving it and pulling it across and brushing it down lightly. Some of the blue is showing through and that's okay. And I'm crossing over my hill here. Mm -hmm. So I've got that. Now I'm going to mix a slightly lighter turquoise. I mean, need to wet my brush a little bit. Pull, 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 pull. So I'm loading some of the turquoise on here. Now I'm kind of heading over to the white more. So I have this slightly lighter color. And I'm going to do the same stroke, weaving over the front from the right to the left, just pulling down. So it's just a slightly lighter kind of turquoise. You should still see the turquoise in it. If you don't pull a little more out, you want it lighter than the hill behind it, but still kind of turquoise and you want your brush strokes, any streaks of color, anything to be the direction of the hill. And it doesn't have to cover what's underneath perfectly by any means. That's right. Doesn't have to do that. Now, uh, another, another question mm. there that came by. Wendy was asking, can I use a 16 by 20 for this? Yeah. You can resize. This, this will scale that okay? Yeah. Nice. And uh, you'll have to like, reposition your framing you know you wouldn't I, i'm not sure how the traceable would exist because that's all square yeah but the way i'm going to show you how to do it it won't it, you'll be able to do it on a 16 by 20 so just do it the way i do it and you'll get a good result gotcha yeah and there's some, i think someone else earlier it was like well could we write could we write words in the frost of the window sure I like, sure i think you could do that yeah what hearts mean, words yeah. little kiss marks That'd all really doable neat. I'm going to just paint my moon um, a little bit of, first, a little bit of white and yellow, and then I'll come back with a brighter yellow. And I'm doing the white and yellow just to make sure I've got good coverage over my blue, because sometimes yellow has a little trouble covering. I'm just painting a little C. The C is tapered at the end, so I've got this nice round. I've got a number four round here. And I'm just using the shape of the brush. I First, I touch the edge of the brush, and then I just curl around, press harder, and then I release. And that's how I get the C. So press light, press harder, curve around, and release to get the C. I'm going to let that dry for a minute while I put on... My next layer of streaky snow. Are you ready to streak your snow? Snow streaks are really fun. So I've got my turquoise here. And I'm going to put some more turquoise on my brush. You can see me coming from the edge and doing the flip. And I'm going to get some more white though. Kind of loosely mixed. See how loosely mixed that is? Where it's turquoise and the white. And then I'm going to just make these sort of little snow strokes. They're curved still, but they're a little more choppy in the white streaking. When I start to notice that the it's becoming uniform color, I'll go do a flip load to get a little more white. Hmm. And I'll let the hill be a little dark here at the edge. And I don't have to worry about this too much down here because I'm going to have window and snow in front of it. I just need some streaky snow back here. Hmm. Now, without... Uh, rinsing my brush, I'm going to go get some more white, a lot more white. You can see this, right? I'm loading, loading, quite yeah. loaded, very thick. And I'm going to do the same sort of snow strokes. But this time the white will go all the way to the edge against the sky. I'm letting the aqua underneath really show through. And again, being very loose. See how all of a sudden you have a snow hill? Yeah. Snow hill! <laughs> Rinse that out. Now I'm going to get my number four again. And I'm going to grab some of my pure cad medium here, my cad yellow. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to like press lightly, press harder, and release. And that's how I get that C shape. Press light, press harder, release. Nice little moon sitting up there on the hill. 
Now I'm going to be doing my tree in and I definitely want to make sure that I don't have white that's going to pop into my leaves when I'm doing it. And so I'm going to dry my canvas again really quick on the cool setting and let you guys talk to John so we can hey. put in our tree. Okay. So hey guys. Um, man, wow, we have a big crowd here today. There's over 40, over 450 people here joining us today. So, well, hello. Um, I'm really excited about uh, what everyone is saying in chat, how they're excited to kick off the, uh, the 12 days of Christmas here. And, the, and, and a, lot, you know, a lot of folks, I think it was uh, 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 Tina earlier, uh, Tammy. Oh, my gosh. I saw it. Tiana. There were a couple of T's here, but I know that one of them, one of them was saying that they were definitely, they were caught at work, but wanted to catch this uh, afterwards. So I'm really hoping to see, uh, I'm really hoping to see those paintings come up. So be sure to share them um, this week. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see those. Let me turn cinnamon back on. I'm but, loving this painting. You guys loving this painting? Yes. I, I was just saying. Sitting in my water, being excited. There are a bunch of people who were saying that they were really excited to paint this painting. This is the one that was, you know, sort of kick off the holiday 12 days of Christmas. And also I was saying, thank you so much for like, you know, saying that. And I'm really hoping to see those. So if they would share them, that'd be awesome for me. I think these are going to be gorgeous projects to do for the holiday season. We've got a lot of gorgeous projects coming up over the 12 days. And you won't believe what I'm closing it off with. Mm. So you guys are going to be super excited when you see that. You know, just just as a as a thing, mm -hmm. I think this would make a particularly pretty ATC. I agree. I think it would make a great artist trading card, and it would translate well small. Yeah, I just you use little brushes though. Use brushes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a little of my black, just kind of like a little bead with my knife. You could do this with your brush, and I'm gonna mix this into my green here, a little bit, so I get a very very dark green. So I'm just folding this in. You could also just use a deep green paint for this next thing, whatever dark, dark green you have. Mix that together. Wipe that off. And I'm going to use my round brush just real quick. I'm going to load it up. I go swirl, 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 flip it over, swirling it in the paint against the palette. You can see it gets loaded, loaded, loaded. And I'm going to come from just below the top of my hill. I'm going to, you know, use my pinky to steady myself. I want to make sure that I've got room in this hill. So you've got to think you've got a little frame here. You want a little room for your tree. So make sure that you place your tree where it's going to have room to uh, have branches. I'm going to drag up my brush, lightning, lightning my stroke to right about maybe mid swirl right here. So we are again, just making sure we're from the top enough room to, you know, make sure that we can absolutely have a frame and everything will place out okay. Now I've got my round brush loaded and I'm gonna just tap, tap, tap. See how it's all loaded? I'm just tap, tap, tap. I'm gonna flip this down and I'm gonna tap out I just go press, press, press a little branch. You could also do this like with your number four cat's tongue. We're just pressing out this little rugged branch shape. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to maybe make a, a downward one and then a, a little one that taps out to the left. Right? If you ever need to, one thing that you can do is you can sit there and also draw out your branch first and say, I've got a branch that drags out to the left and kind of curves down and tapers off. And then you know that the snow is heavy, so you just do these sort of little, see the little press strokes? Gives you sort of that pine tree branch shape. Right. And maybe this branch is shorter and more down on this side, so you can press that down, kind of drag that little smooth. If you need a little if there's too much space there, you can be like, oh, let me pull a little branch here. Tapping and pulling back towards the tree. Right? Because you're making a heavy, snow-laden tree. So right here, you know, maybe the tree's get, it's going to get wider as it comes down. So I'm going to pull out a little branch that curves out. See the curve? Yeah. And I press the stroke and like do another little curve down. And he might have a middle friend 
kind of hanging heavy right there. If I need more black, I'll get it into my green from here because I can control how much is going in, right? For coverage. And I'll just make these little pulls. See how they just pull right into the branch? I'm using the shape, I'm using my finger to rest and, and recuperate. And I'm just pulling this into there. And then right here, I know it's going to be tapered more at the center. And I'll kind of flare my little brush strokes out so that it's got a little shape. You're just making sure that you're not too repetitive, because that's no fun, right? Trees are very random. That you have a nice mix of short branches and long branches. And, and let's see here. I think Col uh, Carolyn. One right here in the middle. Yeah, Carolyn was asking if you could please show that tap off out on another piece of paper. Yeah. So maybe we could do it on a over there on the your palette. Um. Or maybe I someone could grab me a piece oh, of paper. Oh, 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 just... I, I actually hold on. I got an idea. Yeah. No, dirty canvas. Or white paper would work. <laughs> I don't know what there's that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. So you're going to, at the top of the tree, right? You've made your little stroke up, right? You're going to tap the edge of the brush gently to kind of make an uneven top of a little tree. When you want the branch to come out, you pull it out and curve it down. And then you pull in. See, I just press and pull. And I can come here to the end and even define that more. Maybe this one over here is shorter. So it kind of curves down and arcs out because of the weight of the snow. I'll just pull that one in and I can come back and smooth it if it's not perfect. I could have a middle one here. Right, which I just tap to the side a little bit, and maybe another little to the side. Pull out another little guy. That one could be smaller. See how they just start making little interesting, weird little branches. It's just using the shape of the brush. Mm -hmm. You could get away with this with a bright too. It's really just about knowing that you want to create these forms. And knowing that these forms, you know, some of them need to be longer and some of them need to be shorter and fatter and varied. Does that help? Yes, very much. So many people are saying thank you very much for that. Oh, happy to do that anytime. That's what live is for. So we cover those things. <laughs> so everybody succeeds. <laughs> so I'm going to just pull this out and load, load, load. So I'm dragging out and flipping. Dragging out and flipping. And that actually pulls a lot of paint into my brush. And then making sure I have a bunch on the edge here. I'm going to keep doing my branches. Now, if you, when doing that technique, if you didn't have the cat's tongue, you could use a round? Yeah, I'm using a round right now. Oh, okay. okay. But you could use the cat's tongue. Ah, okay. You could use the cat's tongue if you have it. You could easily use any round that you have. A round brush. Yeah. yeah. I'm making another little branch sort of maybe invisible over there. I think a lot about like the branches that are just slightly partially out of sight. So I want to make sure I have nice shapes. Right? Because it's got to feel like a tree. And it doesn't really until I get the snow on it. But this creates the foundation. If I need to get a little more black because I'm having some coverage problems. I come here, get my black, roll off, reload, just keep coming down. And I think I want a nice big series, like some little focal guy. He can be down here. This will matter when I'm putting on the snow a lot. I'm going to drag out a big branch. It's going to be heavy down here. I have another little friend that's heavy and curved out. And this can be a little hard for you guys to see over the blue. But I'm just still continuing what I did up there, but just bigger.
and I'm making sure that everything is not the same as I'm going. Just pulling these in. And I'm going to take this all the way down to the ground so that my tree is very heavy and let's make another little branch all the way down to the ground here. Another little branch hanging out. You need a little more black, get it. Just making sure that your tree is good there. Now I'm gonna just grab probably my my cat's tongue again, but you again you could use any bright, you could use you know your round. And I'm gonna get some of my um phthalo and some of my turquoise. And I'm gonna just make sure that under this tree there is some kind of shadow. Because otherwise, what? <laughs> <laughs> right, just a little bit. We're also going to reflect some light on that snow, but we just want that little shadow there a little bit. And we put the shadow on before we put the snow, because the snow is the brightest thing that's going to stand out. Right. So I'm going to get my snow, and my first snow, I got two layers of snow. My first snow is going to be a kind of bright aqua. More like what we mixed on the, the back hill. I still want it somewhat loosely mixed and I'm loading up. And I'm going to come here at the top. And I'm going to add just a couple taps of that. I'm going to come to the top of this branch. And I'm going to press tap a little snow right there. Let me um, come here again. So I'm just pressing and tapping this first kind of layer because I want it to be a little bit bumply and I'm going to come down the middle and maybe have some. I'm going to make sure that I leave some of my dark green value showing because that's going to help build the tree. right? And then when we come do the highlights, that's how we get that really easy snow laden tree dipped in water pulling off some white so maybe a little turquoise snow here because <laughs> i'm imagining a middle branch and then let's put some at the top of this branch we got to leave some of that green pulling that in but there Oh, let's put some nice snow here. And it can be raised up from the tree, see? Because it's, you know, it's packed on, it's clumping on. And hopefully you can see where you put, like, brush strokes for maybe some of these more central branches. Where you have, you know, your side branches, just tap that. I'm just using the shape of my brush. So I'm just tapping it out there because I want it to be like kind of rough and clumpy. When I come with my bright white, it's going to make my snow pop. And that's kind of the trick. There's a lot of ways people paint trees. But one of the big tricks about painting the snowy trees, whatever technique you're using, fan, brush, just whatever, is to make sure your snow has two values, not one. And what I mean by that is there needs to be a darker shadow snow and a bright highlight snow for it to feel really snowy. Just pulling some little clumps of snow. And I'm just trying to pick individual branches. Okay, if a little green gets in there. If it does, I just wipe off my aqua, grab my white, and go again. Because all the little colors, snow reflects everything, works out actually in our favor. And anytime you can get more with less, it's always great in art. <laughs> That's 
really put some snow on this nice little branch here. Big branch, it's all focal. You can see I get a little bigger with my strokes as I come down a little bit. There's a little snow right there. Pulling some different branch layers here. Letting the shadow of the tree show through. And let's just make sure our lower branches are somewhat defined. And as soon as we have that, <clears throat> now what we're going to do, let me sip some water. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting that snow highlight on our tree. And we want our tree to be just a little bit drier than it is so that the white white is white. But we don't necessarily want it like, it doesn't have to be bone dry. Gotcha. So I'm just going to flash it with my hair dryer just to make it a little bit tacky. Okay. Mm. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wow. Thank you guys. Um, I'm going to come over here and say there's a lot of really cool. Uh, I, oh, you were done. That was fast. Um, hold on a second. I want the surface to have a little bit of a skin to it. Just, mm. just a smidge of one. So that I can come get some white snow like you do. And I'm loading it up. I'll let a little blue get on there. Because, you know, snow's not perfect, loosely mixed. Now, my moon is here, which means the predominant amount of my highlighted snow will be on the right side of my tree. Oops. Light up arrow. I'm going to tap that there. I'm going to say, put a little on this branch, and then, oh, yeah, a little, little snow highlight right here. Bumpy. You put smidge here, but not too much. On the right side of this, maybe just a smidge right there. And really highlight this branch right here. See how we're doing? Yeah. The snow can be just like coming in a little. That really got a highlight. Maybe this one did, but it's little branch has got a little shadow above it because of that branch. Just a smidge over here. Just a smidge on the left. Lots over here where the where the moonlight's hitting it. It's fun stuff. And you can kind of see how those two values start to really create that snowy, snowy feel. And by focusing on that right side of the tree, it's starting to pop and feel like it's illuminated by the moon. Just stroking and tapping in a little of that. And not so much on the left hand side. Doesn't take a lot. Makes me super happy. Now I'm going to get back into my dotting tool, but I don't have any fluid yellow paint. I do, however, have some fluid white paint. And one thing that I can do is sort of improve the consistency of my heavy bodied yellow with my white. I just can't use too much or it'll be like a creamy yellow and I need it to be an actual yellow. So that's sort of how I get through that. And I'm going to use my smaller dotting tool and I'm going to dot little Christmas lights around my tree. You're just using that same color, yellow. I'm just using the yellow. You tell me if you, miss, if you, if you switch colors, because I don't want to miss I'm not them. switching okay. any colors. I'm just using this. Right now, they're just little dots. I have to put halos around them to, for them to show up. And what you want to do is just make sure that you light your tree well. I like to make sure there are several lights at each level of my tree. And then I try to put them in different places. They're not, I'm, I'm a messy lighter. <laughs> I like it to be organic and expressive. Yeah. So you might be a very, you know, practical light, you know, lighter of a tree.
And so that's okay too. Just coming down, lighting my little tree. Lights, lights everywhere. And then when I'm happy with that, I'm going to let that have a minute while I put a little glow on my snow. Yep. Which is I'm going to just take a little of this yellow, very dry brushed, and a little of my white. And I'm going to just put a little soft stroke, just gentle, as if there's some light on that snow. Not much. Just little kisses. Little kisses. So, hey, Daddy, I've got a runaway here. Oh, yeah, she's <laughs> she's been in here. She's been our live studio audience the whole time. I don't know if you, she's been no, I knew up until for a, here she's coming into the studio though. She's now she's now <laughs> in in the next. Come sit down, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've taken my number two shader and gotten some yellow, and I've gotten this small brush because I want to be able to go around my little lights in a kind of detailed way. And I'm going to just dry brush a little glow. Can you guys see that? Should I do it on yeah. my little canvas Yeah, again? let's do a little bit on the, on the other canvas just so they can see that. Okay, you zoom in as much as you can. I'm going to do it like right there. Okay. I'll give myself a dot. I'm giving myself the tiniest dot. And I'm going to get some of just my yellow on my brush. And what I'm doing is I'm just very gently going around making this little dry brushed halo. You guys see that? Yeah. And I'm going to do that around all the little lights. They have just a little bit of glow. That makes sense. So you have to let me know where you're going to start so I can get you. I'll be right back here at the top. All right. Just coming down the tree. Adding a little bit of glow. And these little circles, they don't got to be perfect. You're just creating that glow around. Got a little water in my brush. It's getting a little dry. Each little light, right? Little glowing lights all the way down. So my brush doesn't have a lot of paint. It's real dry. Doesn't have a lot of water on it. And that lets me make these little airy fairy strokes around each light. And I kind of go a little ways with my paint so that, you know, these all have a different level of glow. They're not all the same brightness. By not reloading every light, it gives me some variance. And that's all it takes to light the whole tree. All right. Now my tree's lit. Yeah. Pretty exciting stuff. I set my water. Find my T-square. Find your T-square. <laughs> I have a little trouble with a straight line, so I like to use a T-square. I'm going to dry my canvas so I can use my T-square and not worry about blurring my paint. I'm also going to blow my nose. Oh, hold on. Let me, before you blow your nose, I will push the button. And then I think the palette can. You're all. <laughs> and you can go to drying. Okay, I will leave it off and you can dry. Ah. Then see, so you can see. Now, all right, so <laughs> now I got all my buttons back and I made sure that we're muted in the right places. We're, gosh, everyone is, uh, uh, let me flip back over to my pages. Woo, we have over 450 people here painting along with us on this wonderful first Christmas event day. So I'm hoping that I'm going to get to see lots of these paintings coming up here because this is a really, really nice, uh, uh, first Christmas painting day and I know some people were saying that they liked the windowsill some people were like hmm, maybe I'll do mine without windows so I'm looking to, I'm looking forward to see all the varying the, the different variations of uh you know what can be done so I'm I'm uh I'm happy to hear that you there yes oh, okay excellent 
So I just want to make sure that's dry. Otherwise, as I'm laying things over my canvas, I could be smearing paint and ruining my painting. It's just like a good thing to make sure. I'm going to get my T-square and my chalk. Uh, these are super inexpensive uh, little ones that you can get at different locations. You can also, believe it or not, use the square of a paper towel on a ruler. Because paper towels are incredibly square. Weird thing I learned. <laughs> Sometimes paper towels are more square than the square. Oh, yeah? So this is nine inches, which means the halfway mark would be four and a half. Math isn't really my strong suit, but, you know. You do what you can do. So I'm going to make a mark both at the top and the bottom. Um, at four and a half, I'm going to turn the canvas on its side. And this particular canvas is the length of my, you know, my ruler is good because it's nine by 12. I need to edge back a bit so that there's room for my chalk line. And I'm going to make my chalk line across the canvas at, as close to the middle point as I can. Hmm. So, so I don't want my uh, window to be off center. Helen said that her husband just walked in and, shri and, and, and shivered when he saw the painting. He said that the sky reminded him <laughs> of when he was in the Arctic Circle while in the Navy and icicles were swirling in the window <gasps> or in the, in the wind. No, oh, my the, goodness. The, the ice crystals were swirling in the wind. <laughs> swirling in the wind, ice crystals. Pretty in a painting, not so much fun in life. So I've just divided the canvas again in half, which is on, on the 9 by 12 is 6 inches. And I'm going to use my T-square again to give me a nice halfway mark. Best as I can get. All right. So now I have that nice guideline, which I am going to need. You can't believe how much I need it. <laughs> I'm going to put out my fluid backs, black. So like my white, this is just really helpful to me because it's very fluid and it's going to go off my brush very easily. And I need to make these sort of smooth, even strokes. I'm going to use my Goldilocks, my number 10 bright. This is about an inch wide. So, you know, look at your brush, make sure it's an inch wide. I'm going to do the thing I do where I pull the paint into my brush, I stroke out, and then I come again so I have a nice load. Because the less I have to go over it, the better chance I have of doing it correctly. I'm going to do my hor whatever's horizontal to me first. Wish me luck. I'm going to place my brush in the middle of the line and just try can to stroke across lovely. Can, can, I, can I ask if, you know, not that I'm, I'm at all opposed to you walking the tightrope live here, but could you use tape? You could. Okay. It takes a very long time. <laughs> so I'm just going across. Right. Just to, this is how I did the first one. All right. Right. Um, and also, you know, low-tack tape can be really expensive. You can tape out each line, paint it, and dry it. Tape the next one, paint it, and dry it. But I have found I can absolutely just use my guideline and my paint. Remember, craft paint's a good exchange for this. Okay. So you can, you know, because just, you just need a black base. It doesn't have to be particularly anything. Now you as soon as I have this, then I'm going to pull across... My horizontal, and the reason I'm doing my horizontal is because that's my strongest <laughs> area. Like, that's where I'm the least shaky. Now, you could make this any color window you wanted. Oh, yeah. But would you still paint it black to start? Um, not, not for every single color. The black is nice because it helped my red look like a weathered window. Okay. So you'd have to experiment with that depending on how you have to. Looks. Yeah. What, is, is it, you know, is it a white weathered window? Because it might be like a burnt umber with a touch of black underneath the white. And it might be unbleached titanium. And so there's a lot of different questions that you might have. Now, my sides, right? I've just got to make sure that what I do on my side leaves my tree intact. So I'm going to, I'm going to be real close to it right there, but I should be able to go all the way up. Tammy's like, I'm using some tape. Use tape. Use tape. I feel like you're taking a golf swing and I shouldn't talk. 
So I've just let a little of my bristles go off the edge. And basically all you have to do here is be observant of how you're doing it and just do it the same on both sides. Right. Sue is like, I'm in tape camp too. Yeah, you got tape. Tape it up. Take the time. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we're live and we got to go. <laughs> we're live. We got to go. And also you can do this if you were just free handing it. If you didn't have tape, if you were, you know, having like you had 20 guests over and you didn't want to tape and turn and dry and tape and turn and dry. Give them a guideline. I, you know, <laughs> this is a painting. Yes. It's, it's not an architectural photo. No, this window doesn't actually have to function. So it's okay if it's a little bit wobbly. Mm -hmm. It won't show. And it's it got to be a lot wobbly to show. And it kind of looks cool being painterly. It's painterly. What's well, the first one? is like this. I did the first one. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like you, you, you can tell that it was painted versus being, you know, like machine controlled straight. Mm -hmm. No, I got no machine controlled straight. I don't even do that. I don't even know how that works. That's if you have one of those cool. I got painterly. You can <laughs> I got the painterly style. <laughs> I'm gonna just do the same that I did on the other side, which I noticed I drug off a little of my brush. So I'm just gonna make sure about the same amount of brush is dragging off. Which looks like about an eighth of an inch allowance. Think of it in those terms. So the only reason I'm not doing the heavy body is that um, it can be a little dry and you can see I really want to be able to make long fluid strokes and I don't want a lot of texture. And so that's why I would make that decision. There we go, doing good. Now we're gonna do the top. Now, I guess if you were like super clever, you could get a frame that was in a similar mm -hmm. black color and use your red paint and weather distress it too. Mm -hmm. Extending that frame. That would absolutely add interest. You can, you can paint your frames to match your paintings. And it makes like, you can even take your paintings onto your frames. That's a crazy thing. Yeah. And that extends the, the work quite a lot and makes for some very interesting stuff. Now, I don't want to shock y'all with what I'm about to do next, but I'm going to dry it with my hair dryer. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. See you in a little bit, sure. <gasps> so I'm going to dry it with my hair dryer. <laughs> All right, guys. So thanks for coming out. I'm really, I really do hope to see a lot of your guys' variations. in the. It's If you haven't been to one of these lives, the chat is really fantastic, and uh, our chat has just been hopping today. Um, we're almost up to 500 people in here, and there's a lot of really great ideas and different variations of window styles, things like that. And there are a lot of really great suggestions for uh, for uh, cooking ideas, actually. We had so we were talking about some uh, some recipe ideas and some... Uh, some different things like that in chat. So if you haven't been along, I highly suggest you guys to come join us. Um, chat's a really fun place to come hang out with us live. And luckily, we're going to be doing it for 12 days in a row. So there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be able to catch us over the next couple weeks. Um, and we do these kinds of events on a regular basis. So you don't have to look too far to find a live with us. Yeah. Right? We do lives on a regular basis. Really regular, and right now we're doing them every day. Yeah. So I'm looking for a size down for my 10, like an 8. Keep finding, I have all 6s. Did I? Okay. So I just want to size down so that it's easy for me to fit inside my boundary, right? And still dry brush. I could use the exact same size brush as well, and that would work if you don't have another size. This is just something you can do to make your task a little easier. I'm going to put out my CAD Red Medium. The nice thing about this paint is that is a lot of what makes this window frame pop because the, the pigment is just so bright. 
I'm going to load up. I'm going to pull out. I'm going to pull out. Now, it's nice that it's heavy bodied because now I'm going to be able to do some dry brushing, which I really want to do, which is going to be about there being a light pressure. And I'm going to be very gently here. I will do it on the white. So if I press hard, I get this very solid bunch of paint. But if I press very lightly, right, my, my, my brush is at an angle. I'm pressing lightly on the canvas. I can see how it's like all dry brushed and textury. You guys see that? Oh, yeah. So that's how I get the dry brush. Press hard, more solid, press light. I get a lot of breakthrough. So that's going to be my trick for weathering my window. I guess you can't have too much on the brush to begin with, huh? Well, you could, right? Because then it would just give you too much paint going out. Now, another little trick I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little bit. I'm going to imply like an angle from the corner to the corner. Hmm. So that I can leave just a hint of it being darker. <laughs> like that's how I'm going to do my frames is I'm going to leave little hints of it being darker. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I'm going to just brush across here. I'm going to be kind of neat towards the edge of my frame. And I'm going to do like choppy strokes. You can even come in at different angles because you're talking about chipped old weathered paint. Now, is uh, mixing white the same as zinc white? Um, in technique, in general, it is. The formulations can be different. So if and you, you need to read this, the tube on your um, mixing white and zinc white just to make sure. But for the purposes of transparent, it's a good exchange. If you can't find the zinc and you can find the mixing, go for mixing. But if you were curious, you could check the pigment number on the tube. To find out if they're exactly the same. But for the purposes of paint having a transparent white glaze that doesn't oversaturate your color with pigment, both will work. I prefer zinc. I think it's a little, I don't know, warmer. All right, so now I'm just kind of tapping through some brighter little spots of paint. To make sure it's just feeling all kind of interesting and weathered. All right, and what am I going to do? I know where my strongest stroke is. It's going to be going from left to right on the horizontal. So right now is not the time for me to work to my weakest side. I'm going to make the little barrier. And I'll make sure I leave just a smidge here too. I'm just tapping this out just to know where it is so that I've got just a little bit of that black. Same thing. Just dry brushing this weathered red window. Yay. So yeah, we're just dry brushing it. Some of it be stronger in some spots. It's like all chippy and old. Mm hmm Making sure I've left my little angle there. Now, I know, see, Cinnamon doesn't get to have the chat because she she tends to read the chat and not Yeah, me. you guys. But, but, you know, so, but, so you know, so we got over 500 people here painting along with us. The chat has been going really wow. fast. They've been having a great time <laughs> hanging out with us today. Um, so I was just saying how much, uh, I encourage people to come and, and join us in chat if they have the chance, especially over this next couple of weeks. Um, Tina is really excited to be able to paint along with us live, which she won't be at work, uh, I think on Monday. So. Woo! <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited for everyone who got to be here live. I, it's, it's really fun to get to share this with everybody in this venue and this process. And then also, because like, you know, sometimes I won't know what your questions are and live events are great because mm -hmm. it starts telling me what you're curious about or what you're struggling with. And that helps me think about what kind of videos I need to make mm. and what kind of things we need to cover. All right, I'm just, see, I'm just dry brushing it out. Now, Cindy was asking, uh, on the window frame, is this a good place to use hue since it's a muted color versus the CAD? Well, yeah. 
if you don't want if you don't want it to be if you want it to be more muted and not saturated this is a great place to use hue hue is great if you're just trying to save some money and you're i'm going to rinse out my brush it's getting the paint's getting a little dry on it and then i'll dry it off um so i like hue uh because and basically if you've never heard of this so there's the real pigment and then there's hue and whenever a paint company says hue what they mean is that they have chemically created or mixed together for you the closest color approximation of that pigment that you can have so it's like indian yellow pretty much for everybody is hue because nobody makes paint like that anymore so that's the close closest color that anybody can get everybody has a different indian yellow formula that's that's a fun thing to know mm. <laughs> very frustrating <laughs> I noticed your thread banger glass there. Yes, I got my thread banger glass today from my uh, water glass. It's pretty awesome. You you snick it from me. Well, you've got the DeFranco shirt, so <laughs> well. pick your thread banger glass. <laughs> 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 Gotta get a little vengeance. <laughs> no worries, Daisy. I'm just messing with him. <laughs> All right. So just pulling this out here, just making sure this is nice and know as straight as we can and making sure we've got that nice little seam that wood seam so it's sort of this old house you know using that angle really helps imply the window it's a weird little touch that makes a huge big difference would not bug you with it if it wasn't just awesome sauce <laughs> All right. Just dry brushing this back. So it's okay that like little bits of your black frame are, you know, peeking through. That's what you want. You want this to feel like rough old wood. Like this cabin that's looking out or house or cottage, whatever you've imagined. Because it's your world. It's your painting. You're creating it. I'm just drying this down, pulling this down. All right. There we go. So we've got the outer frame done. Now I'm going to do the center bar because I want to make these two little black creases here. So my best way of doing that is to, first I'm going to come and make sure that I've got that little sliver of black, right? And I'm going to get another little Maybe sliver of black right here. And then this whole beam comes down rough and straight. It's a weird side effect, but I actually really love the texture of the stars under the wood. Oh, yeah. It just has a little flavor. It was just a weird, happy, co you know, sometimes you do have happy accidents, you do. <laughs> like, that works out good. I'm going to do that intentionally sometime. Like, you could intentionally put little dots and then do this dry brushing and you would have knots that just showed up. Or just saying. Or... Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. Mm. And they just would generally like to uh, get some time where the, we can get together and just ask random questions because like... Uh, <laughs> Q&A like, day? Yeah, uh, yeah Q&A day, exactly. Nikki was like, can we just have a, a random Q&A day because there's like, you know, there's a bunch of just random questions that they have. Yeah. We we'll can to, put we'll one of those on the schedule. Yeah. I'm just making sure I'm happy with how my center bar looks because it's pretty focal. Right? It's pretty much the focus. Now, look like this. Yeah. I'm kind of seeing where it's going. Kind of look kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. You can touch up real easily. We'll, uh, we'll also go out there and try to start collecting up some questions on our uh, up on the website, see what we can do there to help mm. get that in advance. Start uh, start collecting those up too. So I am just pulling that to the side, pulling that. Here we go. Here we go. See, and then that little bar it makes it feel like a frame. We're almost done. Wow. So 
Just a little sliver of the black. All right. When you're happy with that, you're going to need to bone dry it. Oh, yeah? Yep. You're going to need to bone dry it for the next part. Okay. Okay. I'll let you do that. Okay. So I know there's a bunch of questions that were coming in here uh, on different kinds of frost and snow techniques. So I've collected up some of those questions. I'll make sure that we get them uh, in here during this next part. And guys, don't forget to share these up with us. We want to see them posted up on Facebook and, and YouTube and our website. You can get them up there anywhere. And we love to see these. Uh, you know, especially as we do these 12 days of Christmas, we're going to have a lot of opportunity for you guys to share your paintings. And that's uh, super exciting for us, uh, especially me, because that's um, what I love to see is all the paintings that come back uh, from all of you guys out there. So, um, yeah, check out our you can check out the website at theartsherpa.com forward slash Christmas. And that'll show your the 12 day collection that we have this year. Um, do do do. Is it all dry now? It is, but we're going to let it cool down because I find that if you do apply tape to your canvas to use lines or create resistor barriers or use contact paper, you do not want any warmth in the acrylic at all because, again, remember I said it's a little more sensitive to that. Is That softens the paint and it, it might pull up more readily. Oh, yeah. So if you let the canvas cool completely and be cool to touch, then it's pretty much indestructible to the tape. Huh. And you can burnish it down and be all crazy. Get the, so so you don't need that no tack tape. Well, you would, yeah, you'd have less need for it. But if you are using um, a regular masking tape, be sure to tap it against your jeans or fabric sofa or anything like that, like a velvet jacket, like several times, and that'll make some nice kind of DIY low tack tape. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Jeans are really good. Velvet's really good. <laughs> mm. I have found surfaces... <laughs> All right, so I am going to use my low tack tape here. I'm going to flip this over so it's easy for me to do. And hopefully, what's wonderful about a one inch brush is it's the same width as one inch tape. So I should be able to come right here and very carefully tape that. Now, there were lots of questions that were coming up around uh, the snowy layer on the window. The, the, yeah, that's the what we're doing right now. Yeah, so I was gonna. I wanted to get some. Ask them all, man. Now, could they use? Uh, there, there was someone who would ask, "What about using zinc white? Mm -hmm. Is the, it to to get a frosty layer? You can use a beautiful zinc white makes a beautiful frosty layer. Okay, and then uh, I guess they could they could use a resist of tape to write things. Is that is would that? Yeah, you way? could use contact paper. Uh, you can have if your friend has a Cricut cutter or a laser cutter, you can have them cut words in contact paper and you can do little stencils and things or sticker letters those sticker could... letters are great you yeah. can totally use sticker letters there's a you go over into the scrapbooking aisle because dude they got some stuff yeah you can't really pull enough tape but <laughs> i'm just making sure tape. that my window is is taped and this gives me a little bit of a resist right where um and i may come across so there's two ways to get this done Let's now, see if I have. With your hair dryer, you were using the cool setting, but it just still has a little heat to it. Yeah. It, there just is still a little heat, and you just don't want any heat. Yeah. So you just that's what you're doing is even the littlest bit of heat there, you want to let it just get all of that out so it's as at room temperature as possible. Yeah. Because they were like, you're not using the heat setting, are you? And I was like, <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. So you can use an ink here to create frost. You can use titanium white. I've got a dry bristle brush. This is a Cambridge, so it's a mix of synthetic and bristles and I'm going to show you one process. I'm going to make sure there's not too much paint on my brush. You could use one of my stencil scumblers if you have that. But I'm going to just kind of scrumble around. I don't want any blue on it. Um, a little snow. I want it to be higher a little bit on the sides. Right, So that's one way that you could do it. I'm showing you this way because the way I like to do it is with my splatter brush. But I want you guys to know that you're not like super stuck. 
right? So I'm just, you can just see, I'm just scumbling this around, making the snow. And the very best, I think, is to use both methods together to create that. And you, yes, you can use zinc. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Making sure some of it is a little bit thicker. Yes. Earlier on, Sandy was asking uh, if she wanted to paint this on uh, a canvas bag, could she use the GAC 900 mixed in with the paint to do that? Yep. Fabric paints, GAC 900 into the paint that she's got. Um, yeah. And, you know, the nice thing about a canvas bag is that it's not likely to suffer from wear and tear the way clothes are. Mm. And stuff. So, you know, you've got even more forgiveness there because of the type of object it is. It's not going to be in the washing machine a bunch of times. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, there's been lots of people, but Francis was the last uh, last one to say, ooh, what about glitter? Yes. You could glitterize that little extra bit there, huh? For sure glitter. Now, I've got my splattering tool. This is my thing on splattering tools. This is a reliable splattering tool, which is why I made one. So what you need is a tool you feel very comfortable splattering with. I have a whole video on splattering and making stars and different ways to make that happen. This particular tool has a very stiff filament in it. It's, yes, it resembles a toothbrush. Because <laughs> that's a good shape for splattering. But I wouldn't put it in my mouth. You can see I'm rubbing my fluid paint kind of around. So it's not big globs of it anywhere, right? You don't want big globs. Mm -hmm. It's a little messy on your fingers. And then you can come here, and with this particular tool, I can very gently pull my filaments, and that lets me get a lot of control over the size and, and how far my splatter goes. It doesn't go everywhere, you know, like it used to all over the studio. Because <laughs> when you have to do the two brush whack method, that's a lot harder to control. But if you have a way of controlling your splatter, this is a nice way to frost your window. And I feel like the little particulates remind me of actual snow. So I like it. Oops, that's a little bit older paint. I noticed that I picked a fresh paint instead of my older paint because it ages out, it gets thick. And what you don't want is thick chunks like in your gravy. Coming up here and just, you can see I just barely have to pull. And I get just tons of little directional splatter, almost as much as I want. And I love that. Love it so much. It just makes That's, me so happy. Makes it so impasto. <laughs> it's so textural. It does. It makes it textural. And the way the random drops hit, I think, also adds a fun layer. And I always think it's fun to splatter. Um, it's fun for me. I realize for not everybody, because some people are like, that is very stressful, the splattering. I'm just making sure that I'm super happy with my snowy window effect. I definitely rinse this out right away, and I never, ever leave it in water because these ones are so sensitive to water. I'm going to dry this. You allow it to dry. <laughs> I'm gonna force dry this. Okay, let me go over here and. Okay, there. So I am sharing up here in links in the uh, uh, in chat here with you guys. So put, putting links up there right now to uh, theartsherpa.com forward slash Christmas, where you can find a list of all of the paintings that we're doing right now. Um, and, and, I, and there's a list of all the descriptions. There's the traceable, the reference photos, and all of the things that you'll need. So you don't have to worry about it. If, you, if you're worried about uh, the drawing portion or the tracing portion, the traceable of this has markings for you to be able to do all the window placement, all that kind of stuff. So it's really easy. Don't let, um, don't let your, your drawing stand in the way of you being able to start painting because those skills will come as you, as you work. So uh, you can go out there. Again, uh, link is in the description below for all the materials as well as a link to our website where we keep that and all of the other projects that are going on and of course the other projects that uh we have going on for this christmas season um so yeah and uh yeah i think that you guys uh the colleen was just asking could you use spray paint in here uh so good good timing was it 
Colleen was just saying, could you use spray paint to get some of this effect? Yes. Yeah, so we, uh, I'd be, I would make sure I had double masking because of the overflow spray paint. So I'd make sure that I had some sort of masking that kind of made sure that you got the little curve on the window a bit, like a mm-hmm. torn paper towel or something, just to make sure. Julie loves this effect. It looks really awesome. She's just yeah. like, I love it. I love it. It makes me super happy. Tape, tape tip. Okay. So if you can remember, I often struggle to pull the tape off the opposite direction that you put it on. So if I put it this way, I would pull it off. This way. And there's a trick to helping remember that. Mm. Put an arrow on the tape. Oh, yeah, that would be good. So you just draw a little arrow on there. I tend to go one direction, so I just assume. (laughs) I'll just make an assumption. I save my tape. You may have noticed this. I'll save my tape um, because I can use it again and again and again. And so since it's a little bit pricey, that's a way that I, I, you'll see me stick it all over my easel for later. Anyways, when you do this, it's less likely to give you um, an unfortunate result. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't even know. So many oh. things can happen with tape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it was, she was asking about spray snow, not spray paint. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess you could do that, too. Yeah. You just grab a can of spray snow and psh, <laughs> it's yeah. then mixed media. It's mixed media. Then I'd hit it with a varnish. <laughs> yeah, I'd I'd try to I'd try to seal that sucker. <laughs> I would. I would hit it with many coats of varnish. <laughs> You'd be like having the one painting that's five hundred years old with spray snow. They'd have to talk about you at the museum. Like they painted it with spray snow. <gasps> all right, we wow. get to sign it. We oh, yeah, did it. You do. You're you're all done, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Wow, that was fast. Uh, yeah, it really is. So this is a hard one. Um, for me to sign uh, simply because I like the design so much, but I'm going to show you where I would sign it, where I design it. You hide it down there in the wood. Um, I pr- I would either hide it in the wood here or I hide it in the snow, and I think I'm going to hide it in the snow corner. Ooh, that's nice. So I'm going to take a little of my turquoise that I have left and a little of my fluid white. <laughs> sneaky signature try to be the red would be a good place to do it too I like that but this looks like somebody wrote you guys gave me the idea like somebody wrote on the window yeah because I used the, the aqua yeah it kind of looks like it's come through a little bit yeah that was my plan so we did it Day one. We did it. Day one. That's awesome. We got another. And remember, on these paintings, the hoot rating, the difficulty rating is in the description across the week. Also, there's a complete materials list for everything for all 12 days and the um, Facebook group right now and hopefully on the website soon. You can see the entire calendar on the website. You've got this traceable. You know what's happening tomorrow. It's polar bears. Mm Mm-hmm. So be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you at these really soon, probably tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye.